This is the Group 6 case study on General Motors. General Motors was founded on September 16, 1908 by William C. Durant in Flint, Michigan, and rapidly acquired a few other fledgling vehicle companies like Buick, Cadillac, Chevrolet, Oldsmobile, and Pontiac. From the early days, GM was interested in innovation and developing new technologies in the automotive industry, and continues to state that innovation is our North Star. During the Second World War, GM was more focused on production of materials for the war effort, including airplanes and tanks. However, after the war was over, GM went back to its innovative roots to develop independent front wheel suspension, unibody construction, and one-piece steel roofs. The General Motors' corporate mission is to earn customers for life by building brands that inspire passion and loyalty through not only breakthrough technologies, but also by serving and improving communities in which we live and work around the world. GM has a vision of a future with zero crashes, zero emissions, zero congestion, a goal it aims to achieve through its innovative spirit. Recently, the automotive general environment has been moving away from mechanical innovations of the past, such as more fuel-efficient internal combustion engines, or improved physical safety devices like airbags, into more technological innovations. For example, new safety equipment is now largely in the hands of technological improvements versus the physical ones developed years ago with the likes of seatbelts and crumple zones. New technologies like automatic braking, lane keep assist, and blind spot monitoring are being used across the industry. In the automotive industry globally, the cost to develop these new electric powertrains is around two and a half times higher than it is for more traditional internal combustion engine powertrains. These higher costs are largely attributed to all the new research that is going into the development of more efficient electric motors, as well as the batteries to power them. One major trend that can be seen today as an effect of these higher development costs of electric vehicles is automakers paring down their lineups to only the most profitable vehicles. General Motors announced in 2018 that it is going to cancel six car models and restructure to focus on the more profitable SUV and pickup truck sales in North America. Ford has also gotten in on this trend in 2018 when it too announced it would be cutting all sedans and coupes in North America, with the exception of the iconic Mustang, to instead focus on trucks, utilities, and commercial vehicles where it sees a much larger profit. The automotive industry is one of the largest industries in the United States. In 2018, it accounted for over $518 billion of the U.S. gross domestic product. The U.S. is currently listed as the second largest automotive producer in the world, with over 11 million vehicles assembled in 2018. Due to these high numbers, participants in this industry are able to take advantage of economies of scale in all stages of the business, from purchasing to shipping. Looking at the automotive industry as a whole, it is a highly competitive market with high capital and very labor intensive. Even with the recent trends in more robotic assembly labor, there is still a very high human component in designing both the vehicles and automated assembly lines. The car industry in general has 10 main firms from 5 countries dominating the global market with over 70% share. The internal rivalry is mainly focused between the top 5 of GM, Toyota, Ford, Honda, and Chrysler, and the competitive forces at play. In the automotive industry, brand loyalty is a strong factor for consumers. This also means that newcomers have a very hard time against these established names. Competition between the top OEMs is also strong as they each fight to attract more consumers in the given market segment. However, this also means consumers have power in driving prices down. Suppliers to the top OEMs, on the other hand, have very little power since there are a large number of automotive suppliers to choose from. GM's current strategy includes striving for zero crashes, zero emissions, and zero congestion. They've also recently switched from a heavy sedan offering to offering more SUVs and trucks, as SUVs and trucks are in higher demand and have higher profit margins. And they've also had an increase in electric vehicle offerings, as the entire automotive industry has offered more electric vehicles to meet customer demand. For their functional areas, GM continues to produce combustion engine vehicles, in order to provide the necessary cash flow to fund innovations such as electric vehicles. GM plans to introduce 20 all-new electric vehicles by 2023. For autonomous vehicle technology, 
GM acquired Cruise Automation back in 2016 to lead and develop their autonomous vehicle technology and how they can bring that into the market. Then for GM Financial, GM's credit institution went bankrupt along with the company back in the late 2000s. They've since built GM Financial up into a profitable credit lending company. And then miscellaneous transportation solutions include Maven, which is a ride sharing program, and Arrive, which is GM's all new electric bike program. So then looking at the company's tangible assets, last year they had about 10 billion between land and buildings. For equipment and tools, about another 50 billion. And then for construction, another 5 billion. If you take away depreciation, that leaves about 30 billion in tangible assets. For intangible assets, Technology and intellectual property accumulate to about 700 million. Their brands are worth about 4.3 billion, with another billion in miscellaneous brings intangible assets total to 6 billion. For the company's competitive advantage, right now, innovative vehicle manufacturing, whether it be combustion engine vehicles or electric vehicles, vehicle manufacturing is a strength for GM and they leverage that quite well, as well as their emerging autonomous vehicle technology with cruise automation. GM and Cruise are considered leaders right now in the autonomous vehicle technology space. Which brings us to problems and opportunities for GM. Switching from sedans to more SUVs and trucks, a future fuel price hike could really put a, that into jeopardy. Electric vehicle market, if you look at customer constraints right now, price, range, charging durations, and charging infrastructure are all hurdles for GM's going to have to navigate correctly to bring electric vehicles to profitability. And then the upcoming contract negotiations with the UAW. From 2019 into early 2020, GM will have idled five North America plants, which really add pressure to the upcoming negotiations. Then political pressure. There's a new NAFTA agreement right now that U.S., Canada, and Mexico is considering that would increase the import tariffs on GM vehicles as well as the content in those vehicles. So GM is going to have to really address the political arena with TAC. And then Cruise Automation. With Cruise Automation, GM is hoping that they can bring their autonomous ride hailing service to the market in 2019. And they are now facing some technology issues as well as government approval issues. So they'll have to really navigate those well to bring autonomous vehicles to the market. Two overarching issues GM is facing is how GM will handle the next 12 to 18 months with their electric vehicle strategy, along with their reduced and refocused combustion vehicle manufacturing. In the next five years, GM is looking at a projected 20% decrease in expected vehicle demands due to a changing de demographic. The race to automated taxis is the most time sensitive issue GM is facing. They previously set a goal to deploy this service by the end of 2019, but a recent report states that they currently are only on track to produce a vehicle that performed at 5 to 11 percent of the human safety level by the end of the year. The second issue GM is facing is how to balance their combustion vehicle production in a profitable way such as to help fund the expensive research and production of electric vehicles. The current political environment and increased tariffs on materials are making sedans a less desirable production op option for domestic auto manufacturers. Higher margins on larger vehicles is a short-term solution to funding vehicle production, but could create long-term consequences for GM if oil prices rise. For the first strategic alternative, GM will work to fix a current and expanding problem for all electric vehicles, charging stations. One of the major issues standing in the way of electric vehicles taking off is the stress and hassle of finding a charging station away from home to recharge your vehicle. There is also the issue of how long it takes to fully charge a vehicle. These factors together have formed what has been dubbed range anxiety by electric vehicle drivers. The second strategic alternative that GM will explore is producing electric SUVs and trucks as opposed to just compact cars. Currently, there are close to 20 electric cars being produced to choose from. SUV and trucks, however, are few and far between. SUV and trucks are already making up a large portion of GM's portfolio due to the larger margins GM is able to make off of these vehicles. What is unknown is if they could still make these large margins on electric vehicles, versions of these vehicles. 
One hurdle that comes with producing larger electronic vehicles is the increased battery size needed to power them. With batteries being one of the most expensive components to these type of vehicles, this could prove to be an issue for any company looking to produce electric SUVs and trucks. I'm going to talk to you about some evaluation criteria for our two strategic alternatives. I'm going to look at some profitability as well as some qualitative criteria, which I'll get in later in the slides. So our first strategic alternative was expanding charging stations, and we're going to look at the profitability. Um, it was es it's estimated um, in 2020 that GM is going to sell about 350,000 electric vehicles. It's based on the previous growth rates over the past few years. And currently, the cheaper charging station option, it costs about $0.12 cents per kilowatt hour. Um, now, the Chevy Volt gets 2.7 miles per kilowatt hour, and if the average driver drives about 1,000 miles per month, then they get about 370 kilowatt hours per month. Multiply that times the $0.12, cents, it costs about $44.40 per month to charge, or $532.80 per year. Now, if they go with the more expensive option, that's $0.59, cents um, per kilowatt hour, that's DC fast charge, um, times the 370 kilowatt hours per month, that gets you $218.30 per month that the consumer will spend, or $2,619.60 per year. If 65% of users use the cheaper option, the AC charger, and 35% use the DC fast charger, we get about or $442 million in um, revenue from those. Now, the cheaper option, the public AC charger, costs about $6,250, including maintenance per year, um, whereas the DC fast charger costs about $76,500 a year. That's installation and maintenance. And if we install 1,000 public AC chargers nationally and 500 public DC fast chargers nationally, we're going to get a cost about $44.5 million, and roughly... That gets us to $400 million um, in profit off of the expanding charging stations. Now, if we look at the um, second strategic alternative, that's producing electric SUVs. Through research, um, some other companies are going to start their electric SUVs, the few that are out there, at $42,000. That's a starting price. Um, and SUVs currently take up about... 36.4% of the vehicle market, growing at 2.5%. So I estimate in 2020 to be 38%. Um, and that'll get us to about $5.5 billion in revenue at that starting price. Now the cost is the problem. The Chevy Bolt lost 72% per vehicle. And if this SUVs are anywhere in the same ballpark, um, it's estimated that they're going to lose somewhere between 10 and $15 billion um, total. Now that could, you know, decrease as technology and demand increase um, to streamline things. So that having a that's a that's a pretty big um, loss, profit loss on the second alternative. Now if we look at a qualitative evaluation, um, we're looking at consumer satisfaction um, with the charging stations. That's better convenience, readily available, having more of them out there. Um, also, just we've seen that the growth in SUVs, um, that market is grown exponentially over the past few years, so consumers are going to love the electric SUVs in general. Um, the company ranking, um, I have company rankings for the project among competitors is important. Um, being first to market, being the most reliable, dependable, having the best price and the best technology, um, even though there's other companies out there doing some of these things, if they've got the best price and the best technology and are dependable, that's going to be very important to the consumer. And then the last one's dependability of the project. Um, so looking for looking for low failure rates, uh, investing a lot of prevention costs, and having consumers have minimal complaints. Um, so those are really important for the consumer to come back and to lead the market and make these um, the most profitable profitable. Um, long-term strategies for GM. In order to best position themselves for the future, GM should implement the strategic alternative of building more electric vehicle charging stations. The reasons are as follows. First of all, it works to eliminate the largest current setback for widespread electric vehicle adoption. As shown on the chart on the right, the number one reason that consumers see electric vehicles as less attractive than standard vehicles is the unavailability and distance of charging stations. 
It also paves the way for future GM projects, such as the Cruise and the Maven. The Cruise is GM's automated taxi service, whereas the Maven is a ride renting program, where both of them are fueled by electric vehicles. So as these become more popular, more electric vehicle charging stations will be needed. It is also the more profitable alternative. As shown in the previous slides, this alternative is projected to bring in around $400 million in profit, whereas the strategy of building more electric SUVs and trucks could take years to become profitable. It is also in line with the new corporate mantra of zero, zero crashes, zero emissions, and zero congestion. It will also increase sales and consumer confidence about future GM electric vehicles, because as the charging infrastructure improves, when GM brings new electric vehicles to market, they are easily more, consumers are more easily able to adopt these products. So this strategy will be implemented by building 20 public AC charging stations and 10 public DC fast chargers per state for a total cost of $44,500,000. The project will be financed internally by GM, who currently has cash and cash equivalents of $12 billion. So this expenditure only represents about a third of a percent, meaning they have the capital to finance the project. The charge will be placed based on market research and what areas of each state are in most need of electric vehicle charging stations. They will be primarily urban areas for two reasons. First of all, the urban areas represent an immense opportunity because currently most electric vehicle charging stations are located on freeways, whereas not many are located in cities. The urban areas are also important for GM because the Cruise and the Maven are both going to be primarily operated in urban areas, so in order to make sure these projects are successful, more electric vehicle charging stations will be needed in the cities. And then once the charging stations are completed uh, to measure the qualitative effects of the strategy, GM will issue surveys and make any necessary changes. In regards to personnel and leadership, Pamela Fletcher, who is the General Motors Vice President of Global Electric Vehicle Programs, will lead the project. She currently has the most knowledge in this arena and has been with the company for a while and understands their strategies. The charges will be installed by third parties to keep costs low and GM engineers will oversee them. Once the chargers are completed, there will be personnel assigned to each state to monitor the stations and to make any necessary maintenance or other changes. Culturally, there's not much of a change needed in order for GM to implement this strategy. GM has been on the path towards clean energy for a while now and this is just the next step. They currently have the mantra of zero crashes, zero emissions, and zero congestion, and they also plan to be fully fueled by clean energy by 2050, and this is just one step in order to achieve that goal. Motivation, we've talked about a little bit for this implementation, but going back to it, there's the potential for profit. This is profitable in the first year according to our estimates and could be profitable in the long run as well. And it also sets up GM for long run success, both with their electric vehicle, future electric vehicle models and the Cruise and Maven projects. And it's also in line with their recent company culture changes and going towards clean energy.